<laughs> and your Arsenal have obviously done um, their own rebuild under Arteta. They've used lots of young players. They've got this mantra of trust the process, which sounds like something that could apply to what you're trying to do here. Um, how do you view what Arteta's done there? And kind of to what extent is it a sort of model that you can follow? Yeah, I think I think the whole you know the football club, um, you know, Arsenal have done a really great job in understanding that you know they they were sort of probably heading in a in a, in a direction that um, was showing them that it wasn't going to be successful. And um, you know, once Mikel came in, um, you know that they they stuck as you said to to the process, irrespective of short term sort of gains uh, that may have been made by going in a different direction and. I think Mikel's been outstanding and been really strong right from the start of, you know, having a real vision for the football club and the club's backed him. And But I don't think that's unique. I think, you know, Liverpool did the same with Jürgen. You know, most clubs that end up having a successful period um, do it on the back of having a real clear idea about what they're trying to create. The only problem is, is that, um, you know, a lot of clubs kind of, jump at shadows at the first sign of things maybe not progressing at the rate that they were hoping to, whereas, you know, like I said, it's credit to Arsenal, credit to, to Mikel that they're back to each other and, and, you know, they're reaping the rewards of it. Um, but that's not a blueprint for us to follow. We've got our own blueprint and, you know, that, that, that you don't have to follow anyone else's time scale. You don't have to have, follow anyone else's processes. What you've got to do is, um, like I said, have a clear idea about what you want and then, you know... Um, Provided along the way you're seeing progress to to that end, then try and stick to it. And I think it's fair to say that given the choice, Arsenal would always prefer a kind of more open game. We saw what they did to PSV on Wednesday night. I know you said you're going to stick to what you do, but could this be a game where we see sort of tactical tweaks or different personnel? I'm not really bothered about what Arsenal want as a game. I'm more bothered about what we want as a game. And... Um, you know, as I said before, it's about us challenging ourselves um, to to be the football team we want to be, um, and the football team. Yeah, you know, the, the the kind of um, progress we want to make is playing the football that we've started playing. That's as simple as that. So you know, um, what the opposition may want or may not want becomes kind of a moot point for us if we don't play our football. You know, Like I said, there's always natural adjustments you make during a game because of what the opposition do. But um, we've started playing this way, like I said, because it's how I think we're going to be successful, how I believe we'll be successful, not because I'm trying to, like I said, um, create something that's pleasing to the eye. If we're not going to win with it, I won't do it. Biggest derbies in the world in terms of people watching, obviously in this country. Uh, world, um, the old firm is one of the most famous. I'm just wondering your experience of derbies over the years. What what other memories come to mind? Maybe from some of the derbies that we would know so much. Yeah, look, the, the, again, you, you you understand, irrespective of kind of the, the magnitude on a global scale, or you know, whenever you're playing your next neighborhood in whatever sport you're doing it, there's always an edge to it because you know you know that until you meet again that bragging rights sit in one part of the town and um that doesn't change anywhere in the world you know all the great derbies um all the great sort of rivalries sometimes they're individual rivalries they're usually based on something um significant and um i think there's an added sort of edge when it's geographical as well when you're literally neighbors that you you know you kind of want to be sort of kings of your own neighborhood and i've experienced that you know even in australia but um happened in japan as you said in happening in glasgow and uh it's great i love it you know i love being part of it um you know you, you understand that it is only one result but you also understand that that it's more significant than that to to the supporters. So uh, you kind of factor that into it, but um, you know, it's uh, one way or another. You come out of it um, with a memory, you know, that lasts with you forever. It's either a good one or a bad one. You kind of hope it's a good one. Any memory specifically, particularly with the supporters over the years? 
no, nah, look, I think, like, they're all, like I said, they're all sort of, the edge is always the same. Obviously, you know, when we played um, Rangers, I think, uh, I think it was in my first year, we only had 700 Celtic supporters in there and we won and that was unbelievable, you know, where, you know, 700 uh, at the end of the game could silence uh, thousands. So, um, but, you know, wherever I've sort of been, all those kind of experiences, like I said, and I've, I've been on the other side of it too where... It's not so good. Um, and uh, like I said, you remember all of them. That's the thing. Either way, some other results, you know, you, you may tend to forget, particularly if you're in the game as long as I am. But derbies, you, um, you always remember them. And if you try and forget them, somebody will remind you from either camp. And um, the difference between you and Cal in terms of your journey could be more different, really. I mean, you have a few years of matter to you, but it's been a much longer journey to, to, to this club for yourself. Talking with Gary Lineker about some of those times before he spoke to us about those mm. issues. So, mm. I just wanted to elaborate a bit more on that in terms of some of the things that maybe, you know, without naming names, that people said to you that gave you the impression, like you said to Gary, that this might never happen. Well, it's not, yeah, and I don't want to sort of cast aspersions on people. I mean, it's just that they've never heard of me. So, you know, you're kind of looking at black faces and, you know, and you, 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 you kind of hope that there's a flicker of recognition there about something, you know, but it's like they've just met somebody who's, you know, um, who they didn't realise was in the football world, let alone, uh, you know, uh, potentially a, a candidate for a club. So, you know, they, but that's okay. That's just my journey. I don't say that for people to to kind of, you know, woe is me. It's like, mate, I, I love my journey, you know. It's made me the man I am today and I've had unbelievable experiences and, and there's always different ways to, to get to, to the highest level. And, yeah, I didn't think I, I would, but if I didn't, it wouldn't have diminished sort of my life or my career. I still would have felt like I've, you know, I've, I've achieved all I wanted to because I've made an impact wherever I've been and that's always kind of the only thing you can sort of control. But, um, you know, from that perspective, it just it's just part of my journey. Other people have different ones. As you said, Mikel... You know, I, I, I spent a week at City um, when I first got the Yokohama job because um, they were part of the group and they were generous enough to, to, to sort of invite me in and I didn't speak to him, but I observed training. You could see then that how passionate Mikel was about the game and, you know, you could sense he was, you know, he was itching to get going and, and become a manager himself and, you know, we've got a, we've got a sort of common acquaintance in, in Tim Cahill and, and Timmy was always speaking very highly of him, you know, both as a player and as a person and, uh, you know, he's, like I said, he's had a different journey but he's made the impact. So I guess that's that's the whole point of it, as I keep saying. It's not, there's no real, real defined way to, to get here and as long as people keep an open mind, you might be able to, you know, find, you know, great people, um, you know, from all type, different types of, of sort of trajectories to get to, to this point. Sachin. Um, Sean's asked about Richarlison, which went into the Sheffield United game, quite a bit of a place. He looks to open up about issues with that. They had a remarkable game, incredible impact in that game. And obviously one game not going to change all the issues we've gone through. Have you noticed any difference with him this week that has more happen on Saturday? The impact he has helped in any way at all? Um, no, I mean, look, He's, he's he's training well. He, he seems to be sort of at ease with himself. Um, you know, I think you're right. I mean, it it, it does help when things, you know, um, go well. Um, but as I said after the game, that's that's the balance probably Richie's got to get in his life now to understand that you know the more you can sort of um, you know try and keep a, a balance in the way you view your own life, the better he'll he'll be able to overcome the issues, you know, he has. And, you know, if his football's going well, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be going well because he's training well and he's, he's a fantastic footballer, then, you know, hopefully that helps him in the other areas of his life that he needs to. And that's the same for all, I guess, all footballers. And, and you know, hopefully that helped him. But I think, you know... <clears throat> You know, the club's, as I said, the club's there to support him in, in the ways he needs to. I don't need to be across that. And, and all the lads have sort of, you know, um, been supportive as well. Um, and he looks like he's in a good place. But, you know, as you said, that doesn't mean that his issues have gone away. Um, you know, whatever those issues are, he, you know, he'll, he'll need to... 
to find a way to tackle them and, and hopefully um, you know, football helps him in that process. Just one thing on the, just on the dog, I mean, they are, they are emotional players. I know you said you're going to tackle Sunday's game. Given the emotional around you to play the world has done, will there be any adjustments or bring some to the last some say to the boat? Yeah, um, uh, you know, with those kind of things, I kind of, I don't, I try not to sort of pre-plan them too much. It's, it's more about reading the, the kind of room and, and sort of the, I mean, we still got training tomorrow and seeing how they feel, look at training, you know, if, if you know, seeing how the kind of build up is to the game and again, trying to get a feel for, for the room before I sort of speak to them about the final things and kind of frame my message. I always feel it's better rather than me going in thinking, oh, you know, I've got to really be strong in this area and, and maybe it's not needed. You know, they're, they're already sort of focused in the right way. So, um, again, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll leave that to, to, to sort of when we get closer to the game. But ultimately, like I said, the, whatever I say and whatever kind of um, way we prepare, and there's nothing like the experience itself. That's the greatest teacher you have. And um, for us, it, you know, that, that'll be, you know, that'll be where we'll get the most out of just going out there, experiencing it and seeing how much we can show of ourselves in, in such a big game. Okay, we've only got a couple of minutes, so if we could just rattle through Paul, Tom and George, please. Do you think it's all similar? It seems like quite a similar sporting philosophy. Do you like to play attacking football? Did, did you keep in touch with him after that meeting? Did you say you were close to Tom? Or? <laughs> Uh, no, I, and, I, and it wasn't a meeting. I didn't speak to anyone, mate. I, I kind of just sat and observed. And um, no, we're not close. And uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, the, the football world's a funny one, you know, because I think there's an assumption that we got all this spare time to to hang around with one another and talk to opposition coaches, and um, it's 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 not what exists. Um, but um, and you know, in terms of similarities. Um, you know, I'm 58. He's whatever. I've had 26 years. He's five years into it. Um, you know, he's, he's managed in one country. I've managed in a few. Um, I'm not sure how he's got a great head of hair. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's a lot fitter than I am. I don't know, mate. There's not many threads there I can sort of join between us. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say opposites. We're we're people, mate. We're all different, you know. And even even the way his team plays is, you know, yes, he does have a attacking philosophy, but it's different from mine. And and that's the beauty of the game, you know. That's 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 what you love about it. That uh, even you know teams and and people you kind of think have a similar philosophy. There's there's always those tweaks, and it's why you can't copy. You know, it's why I keep saying when people say, well, you know, it's like, you know, if, if you're an artist and you, you see a Picasso, yeah, you can copy it, but it's not going to be a Picasso, is it? It's the same with football. You can try and see that somebody else does something really well and try and, but you, you don't bring your own personality into it. And, um, you know, as I said, I've, I've got a great admiration for, for, for the way he's gone about things here and, and the way he's stuck to his beliefs. I think uh, it's a credit to him. I've been working, mate. No, not many games I've gone as a, a supporter, to be fair. Um, most of my experiences have been um, being involved. Um, I've only been to one World Cup and that was the one I was involved in. I've only been to, like, six Champions League games are the ones I was involved in. That's kind of been my, my life. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to, to just go and support or go and watch events. And how do you handle these games personally? No, nah, it's pretty consistent, mate. I'm I'm miserable either side of it, and um, <laughs> my wife and family are used to that. Um, and um, no, nah, look, uh, no different because I, I you know, I, I know what's coming, and you kind of look forward to that. You know, that's, that's when we walk out there, um, yeah, kick off time, and the roar goes up. You're right in the middle of it and you're looking forward to it and you want to do the best you can do. I want to try and support the team and, and everyone as the best way I possibly can in my role. And then, you know, at the end of it, you deal with what's what's left and, and usually you're, you're, you're pretty, pretty exhausted by it. And, and 
what you do know is that irrespective of the outcome in, in probably less than 24 hours, you've got to dust yourself off, walk back in here with uh, a clear head and, and get ready to tackle the next task. So before I'm bored, you said that sort of buy into your approach and your methods. I mean, is this kind of against Arsenal, you play the way they play the best in Europe, the best in the game, is this kind of the ultimate test? I mean, how do you get the players to kind of keep taking risks? Yeah, by not by not shying away from that challenge, I guess, um, and uh, not fearing you know the outcome if if things don't go well. You know, ultimately, that's always your measure. And you know, I, it, it, it's it's my history, and you know, people sort of use it almost as a you know a kind of barometer against me that you know when when I went into Champions League games with Celtic or I went into World Cup games with Australia that. You know, I should have changed my approach and we got some pretty decent lessons along the way. But I just think that's the only way you can measure yourself. How do you know? If you ever want to be that kind of team is, is, is I guess, the, the, the question. If you want to be a team that challenges, well, you know you have to play that way irrespective of the opponent. So you, there's no point not using a game like Sunday as a measure to see where you're at. You know, if you shy away from it and we don't play our football and we manage to get a draw and, you know, we survive the experience. What have we really learnt apart from the fact that we've survived 90 minutes of football? Nothing. So, you you know, and that'll be the, the... Yeah, and the players, I think, already know that that's what be my message to them. We're going to go out there and play our football and measure ourselves. And if we're short, we're short. We'll, we'll, we need to make that up. And if we match them, well, it's great, isn't it? Because then we know we've still got a long way to go, but we've already establish ourselves that, you know, in the biggest of the occasions, we're prepared to play our football. George, final one, please. Yeah, it is. It's important. Um, but I guess even for them, you know, it's their first time as leaders in something like this, you know. And when you're not a leader, it can easy, not that you would, but you, it's easy to just sort of worry about your own performance. But now they've got to do that. So it's a, it's a great test for them as well and their leadership for sure. But again, this is the experiences I want these guys to have. We need to have as a group to, to help us grow. It's the only way you grow. You don't grow by sort of, you know, literally being in the shade. You know, you've got to stick your head up and see the sun and, allow yourself to, to grow even though you may mean at times that you know that that experience isn't a great one you still can grow from that so it's it's a it's, it's a challenge for for all of for all I guess the the group and and for us um, but irrespective it won't stop our kind of um, you know real intent to to, to become this kind of football team, whatever the outcome, you know. Um, obviously, positive means, OK, you continue down there, but even positive can sometimes derail you because you think you're further ahead than what you are, and we're not. We're, we'll, after Sunday, we'll be six games into a, a pretty significant rebuild. OK, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.